Okay, so let's continue with the CSL. Um, this does so much. I'm kind of a little bit at a loss of how to break this up, but I think I'm gonna. I found a way that sort of makes sense. Um, so today we're gonna talk about wave folding um, because number one, I'm coming to you with the assumption that you understand the simple outputs, like a sine wave output is a sine wave, a, you know, a triangle, sawtooth, etc. Those all do their thing. Um, that's more like normal oscillator stuff. Um, but it's sort of the wave folding outputs and the multiplication outputs and the FM and things like that that might need a little bit of explanation. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about the final output. So wave folding all the way to the left is really reduced amplitude, um, almost silent. And as we go, we slowly hit a sine wave. And then we start to get more harmonics. Okay, so that, this is all kind of in line. So there's an attenuator, uh, uh, an attenuverter, and there's a CV input. Um, so that CV input is looking for control voltage. I'm going to try to stop banging the camera. So I can take, you know, I'm just taking like a fluctuating voltage output out of a random module. And as we turn this up. So you can see how that random voltage is sort of adding to the wave folding. Uh, important to note the voltage and the wave folder add together. So you can like max that out. Another thing to think about is this is attenuverted, so we could go the opposite way. Let me find a happy medium here. Okay, so that's sort of upside down signal. Um, the other thing that affects this is the, um, this is a symmetry setting. Uh, it's kind of like a symmetry bias. So there's a lot of sounds in there just by moving that knob. Uh, something else to think about is that input. So I can take <laughs> I can take another signal and plug it into here, and then this will get added to the the sine wave. The you know the wave folding output is really the sine wave um, wave folded. So I can actually control. And when you've got that set up, I'm just taking the square wave from the second oscillator and plugging it into here to the input. Um, so when you've done that, this function at, as a volume control, and then the wave folding functions sort of as the harmonic slash volume control of the original signal. So all the way to the left, we only get this bottom signal. Okay, and that's summed together. Um, so that got me thinking, what else can we plug into here? <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, so what did I do? I took this I took the audio output of the morphogene, which is playing like a like a choir loop, and I plugged it into here. Okay, 
Okay, so then there's like maximum mayhem there. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to try a drum machine into here just to see what happens because I think that could be a great fun thing to do to myself. Um, so I hope this gives you some ideas. Um, you know, wave folding is, it's, it's a thing. So play around with it and have fun and definitely play around with this input, um, the uh, symmetry input. Okay, and I just committed a major CSL party foul here. Um, I showed you the top channel. I didn't show you the bottom channel. Um, there's a big reason there's two different cores here, because they really sound different. Um, so here's the bottom channel, wave folded. <laughs> So you hear a completely different sound. <laughs> and that attenu this uh, symmetry bias setting really does nuts things. <laughs> Crazy, right? Um, and I find the symmetry, this input here, really responds differently too. And just for fun, we will plug in the sawtooth from the top oscillator into there. Okay, so this is our top oscillator as we move the wavefold. And we can even link these together. Okay, and I hope you are listening in headphones because that thing is has crazy amounts of bass. Um, as you combine the signals. Um, so I hope this gives you some ideas. Try both channels. <laughs> 